So I'll just talk about a little bit of the history. So after I finished medical school at the University of Nebraska, and if everybody can't hear me, raise your hand. I have an audiologist in the audience. <laughs> I'll try and speak up. So I did my residency in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And I took a temporary <coughs> position after I finished in the emergency room and worked as an emergency room physician there while we awaited the birth of our first son. <coughs> that gave me a chance to see a different side of medicine. It taught me that I really wanted to develop those long-term lasting relationships that you talk about with patients and that I would really only be filled by start, fulfilled by starting my own family practice. After that, we volunteered for six months in Project USA and we were in several uh, native health villages in New, uh, New Mexico, and in Montana, and in Barrow, Alaska, before we settled in our new home in Fremont. This time period gave me an opportunity to kind of get my licensure in place, get my staffing in place, in preparation for opening my solo practice in July of 1981 in Fremont. I still remember how happy I was, but anxious to see my very first patient with my brand new staff. Evelyn and I wonder now if it was bravery or if it was maybe foolishness to have a new baby, buy a new house, start a new practice with no patient base and with no other source of income. Well, as you know, it worked out. And Freeman has been very supportive of us and has been a marvelous place for us to practice medicine and raise our family. I want to talk a little bit about my staff. As you know, many of them are here. The loyalty of my staff is unmatched. In 33 years of practice, I have two employees that have been with me from the beginning. I have six that have been with me 25 years, and I have nine that have been with me more than 10 years. We have five families who have worked with me with two generations of their families to serve our patients. With all the stresses and changes in medicines, I really feel this is a remarkable accomplishment. It shows their dedication to caring for their friends and families. Their um, dedication goes beyond the time that they spend in the office. My staff has been involved in patients' weddings, in funerals. They've done uh, baby showers for needy patients. We've had fundraisers to help patients with their medical bills. Most importantly, they hold patients' hands when they need a compassionate listener. They share in the joy of their joys and shed tears at the loss of one of their loved ones. The patients know their dedication. And I think it's often they would rather see my staff than me on many given days. That same devotion the staff shows to our patients is extended to me and my family. They do their best to make a day run smoothly. In a busy day in a family practice with many uh, emergencies that come in, they work with the schedule and the patients in all kinds of ways. In the years of illness in my own family, they sent supper home with me for a year. They took our kids to activities when I was unable to, and they hugged me at the time of my mother's death. I will never forget their kindness and compassion. <clears throat> family. Family is the most important part of this journey. <clears throat> they've been patient, they've been understanding, they've been kind. They've taken over when I've called to attend to other people's needs. It was a privilege to mentor all three of my sons during their medical education. It was marvelous to see their compassion of care in my patients in my office and to see them through their medical rotations. It's, it's given them a great uh, deal better understanding of what my day-to-day -day life is like. I'm honored that they've all chosen the path of medicine in their own career paths. And it's rewarding and sometimes humorous to talk to them now about their own patients. You might find it interesting that my psych psychiatrist's son, Curtis, called me the other day to talk about constipation. <laughs> Evelyn happened to be on a conversation that was very detailed and very involved, and her eyes got bigger and bigger, and when I hung up, she says, what is wrong with Holly? <laughs> I said it wasn't Holly, it was one of Curtis's patients. <laughs> The most important here, person here today is Evelyn. She stood by my side through most and been my most trusted, confident, my most compassionate, understanding partner that anyone could have had. She was a mother and often the father when I wasn't able to be part of family life. She waited patiently many evenings and nights until I got home to share my joys or my sorrows of the day. I know how difficult it was at times, but she's continued her undying love and support and I'm eternally grateful. 
students. I've been involved in medical students' uh, careers throughout my practice years. It's a source of continued stimulation and keeping up with the latest advancements in medicine. It's sharing their joy at their first delivery or their satisfaction in, in doing their first laceration repair. It gives me a warm feeling. It's interesting to see them move on into private practice of medicine and what it's like. It's interesting to show them how it is to be in the private practice of medicine and show them what community life is like in Fremont. I love following their medical education careers and their advancements, and many of them have become specialty consultants to our practice and to uh, our patients. Patients. The doctor and patient relationship is really special. I'm privileged to have cared for four generations of family. I'm so humbled that they have placed their trust in me for many for three decades. We've gotten to know each other well, and I feel like part of their lives. They are also part of mine as well. They ask me how my family is, they offer prayers, they send me gifts, they get articles out of the paper or journals that they know I might want to read. This is really what family practice is about. Caring for families through generations. It's a blessed coincidence that the first baby I delivered in 1981, the baby's name was Christine. She was also the last baby I delivered her last baby girl in 2011 when I delivered my last baby in Fremont. Things have changed in medicine. Many things have changed in the past years of my career. Immunizations now are available to prevent many devastating <coughs> diseases that families suffered in those days. I remember many nights of uninterrupted sleeps when I went to the emergency room to do spinal taps on young children looking for men meningococcus meningitis. And now this is extremely preventable with the vaccines that we have. We now have genomics to assist in cancer care and even cardiovascular care. We used to have to get a hard copy of the medical journals and wait sometimes days or weeks for an article to come or a book to come that we needed to do research on. Now I can look up Medscape on my phone or up to date, literally by the patients in the room or in the office. Computerized medical records have been uh, replacing now the cumbersome medical charts and will allow patients to have access to their medical records anywhere they are in the world. Patients are more involved and knowledgeable about their treatment options. They are now full partners in healthcare, which is better for them and better for us, us as healthcare providers. Patients know their bodies better than we do and bring this knowledge to the partnership that makes for better health. We need to embrace these changes in med technology and in patient partnerships. Service work. I've enjoyed many opportunities in ways other than the office medicine to practice. Service trips to third world countries and memberships in nonprofit boards, church organizations, medical staff offices, and even our own patient safety foundation on our reform has promoted my own personal growth. We have met so many wonderful and committed people on these journeys and endeavors. Their dedication continues to inspire me. Our own experience with medical air and the work with auto reform has certainly made me a better doctor because I, just, I understand both more, understand the doctor and patient relationship more deeply. I'm less defensive, I'm more compassionate, and I'm more grateful than I used to be. I've learned how to accept responsibility and to do the right thing, even when it is the most difficult thing to do. To say, I'm sorry, this is not what I wanted for you, when part of the patient care did not turn out as we planned. Honor Reform, as you know, is a national organization. We stay very active here in Nebraska. If I had one wish for our state, it would be the adoption of a bill to emphasize safe injection practices. We've seen so many lives here in Nebraska and throughout the country altered or ended because of lack of, of adherence to basic injection safety. Honor Reform is willing to roll up our sleeves, work with Nebraska legislatures, and put an injection safety bill in place. And we believe this legislation is long overdue. <coughs> now I want to speak to you just a little bit as your friend Tom. You've all been such strong and great support to me, and you all share in this honor. To our parents, thank you for being such role models, hard work, and dedicated service. To my family members, thank you for waiting Christmas dinner for me till I finished many long nights at the hospital. To Katie, and she's in here, thank you for your steadfast effort in compiling the nominations of this award. To Tom, 
Tom, your partnership is a treasure to me. Uh, your loyalty and cooperation to our practice has made it an enjoyable place to work. Thank you especially for covering me in the long times when we've been away with foundation work. To Mike and Ron, who could have foreseen today that when we were classmates 40 years ago at the Chicago Clinic, your friendship through these years has seen us through many difficult times and many joyous times. Mike even drove out for Omaha when I had a bad finger injury to sit by my side and help me to make the right medical decisions. Dad and Pat, thank you so much for your guidance in our personal finances. It makes retirement a much less scary option. To Ron, Ron, uh, I've heard you tell me many times to slow down over the last 30 years. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> To Gerald, Gerald, we've had so many times of laughter together. I appreciate your, you as a cousin, as a friend, as a naturalist, and even as my chauffeur to many late night house calls. <laughs> Diane and Mark, thank you much for being such great friends. We've raised our children together, and now we uh, compare notes about our grandchildren. <laughs> We're looking forward to growing old together. <laughs> Father Chuck, you've mentored me in ways of dealing with patients in times of tragedy. We sat many long nights in the emergency room and shared uh, tragedy and at the bedside with patients. You've baptized our children, you renewed our wedding vows, and you continue to be a faithful friend. And to Steve, thank you for <coughs> your leadership and honor reform. How gratifying it is to see our small grassroots organization being now a mean, meaningful change um, for the country in patient safety. For this, to all of you, I am grateful from the bottom of my heart. Our work is not done, and I'm eager to see what the next 33 years bring together. <laughs> night for all of his contributions. As most of you know, as, as hopefully you all know, family medicine has a bright future. Uh, things are changing. Uh, family medicine is gaining more traction. It's becoming the, the specialty that is really the most important to impact patients care down the road, looking at preventive health care, value-based health care. With people like Dr. McKnight, you can see we have a very bright future. Thank you. Thank you so much.